welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are new here thank you so much for joining us if you are returning you already know it you are fabulous all right y'all so let's jump right into today's video this is a collaboration with holly from over at hot humble pie not only is she very talented, but she is such a great friend of mine. I just love her to death. So let's jump right in. All right, this first one here, she and I actually chose a few items from the Dollar Tree that you can find every day. So we're gonna be using these vases to start out with. And I just took them outside and spray painted them with my Rust-Oleum two times cover in flat white. Now I'm gonna take them, add a little dab of hot glue and then we're just gonna wrap these with our twine all the way around the neck of it. Just a little ways up. Um, I just felt like it made it look more farmhouse, like with where I'm going with this. Um, I wanna do the enameled look, but also I thought that the twine would really just kind of bump it up a little bit as far as the, the, ha the farmhouse look. Also, that, that little lip around the top of it up underneath there you could kind of still see a little bit of the pink and the purple so I actually thought okay not only will it um, you know look cute as far as the farmhouse but it'll also save me from being able to see that so killed two birds with one stone there so just gonna wrap all four of these right around the top these turn out so super cute such a great idea I love 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 that we decided to do the everyday um, stuff from the Dollar Tree because I know that sometimes the Christmas decor and you know different pieces like that are not easy to find they're not easy for me to find I live in a very small town so we don't get a lot of the stuff that everybody else gets so being able to do these DIYs and make Christmas decor with everyday stuff is is just perfect I think it is great and I hope that it really helps y'all so anyways I'm taking a black sharpie and I'm just going to hit these these jars or vases in a couple different spots with that black sharpie. I went right around the, the lip there, the top. I'm going to go around the bottom edge, just giving it that enamel wear look. I want it to kind of look like the paint is chipped and, you know, it's wearing off around the edges. But just going in with a black sharpie, uh, that's all it took. Now, I had to go over it a couple times to get it, you know, really opaque black. But totally simple to do. And it really makes a difference also. All right, now I have got these um, vinyl letters cut out that actually were sent to me a while back. Um, one of my very first Happy Mails was a box full of vinyl cutout stuff that a lady had sent me. She had cut out a bunch of stuff on her Cricut and sent to me. Um, and I'm actually just now getting around to being able to use these letters and I just love them. Hello. They look like the Ray Dunn. So I think they're so stinking cute for this, this little project, but thank you again for the lady that sent the, um, vinyl cutouts. I love all of it. So we're going to use those letters, but I just stuck these right on. I didn't do the transfer tape and all that stuff. Now it probably would have been a little easier to get that in on with the transfer tape, but considering the fact that the rest of the letters was just an E and O and an L, I thought, you know what, I can just peel these off and stick them on there. No need for getting the transfer tape out and doing all that stuff. So just stuck these right to the, the bases. And I did line them up so that way, um, you know, as you can see, I've got them standing up. And I just kept them lined up with each other. That way I could make sure that I was putting my letters in, in the same height as, you know, the other bases. And that way it would just spell out the word Noel right across the, the jars or the vases, excuse me. I keep wanting to call them jars. All right, now I've got this piece of flooring and I use this flooring on my channel all the time. My best friend gave me a slew of it and it's just, it comes in handy so often. So I'm just gonna take that and I took some watered down black chalkboard paint and I'm just gonna stain this piece of wood. Literally, it's just black chalkboard paint that I added a little bit of water to the bottle and stained that piece of wood. Now adding a little bit of hot glue to the bottom at lip of this um, jar. Now the bottom of this is kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's not really a flat surface on the jars. It's got like an edge around it. So you really have to get that hot glue right on that edge in order for it to, to stick. And it probably would have worked better with maybe um, like wood glue or E6000 or something like that. But just for the purposes that I needed it for, I'm just gonna stick these like this. I will probably take it apart to store it anyway. So 
not a big deal just using my hot glue and I thought that was totally fine that would work that would work just as good I just glued down all my letters now I started out with the N and the L so I started from the front and the the end you know got those two jars on and then did my two in the middle that way I could make sure that I had everything spaced evenly this really turns out super super cute all right now I've got a bunch of different uh, ribbons here and some twine this twine actually came from burlap rabbit burlapfabric.com um, and I actually was showing y'all that because that would have been cute to have wrapped the tops of these vases in also that I thought that would be kind of cute but I thought about it after the fact so anyways I decided to take some of this berry garland and just weave it in and out of these vases I just needed to add something it needed a little bit of something to make it pop and I just decided on the on the berry garland and I thought it was perfect I love that it's wired because you can make it stay right where you want it. All right, now I'm going to be using some of these picks that I actually got from the Dollar General store. Um, I tied myself just a simple little bow out of this, this gingham uh, ribbon here, and I got it from the Dollar General store, dollar a, a, a roll. I'm going to be gluing that just to the E. Now, I only put the picks the floral picks and the ribbon on the E and I just think it turned out so stinking cute. I love this. Alrighty, y'all. DIY number two. We are moving right along. I've got these um, sheet pans. Now, these are definitely an everyday item at the Dollar Tree. You can always, always, always find those. I have got two of the Christmas tree cutouts, and those can be replaced with like um, the foam board. So, don't worry. You don't have to have those tree cutouts. I'll show you. We'll, we'll see here shortly. All right. Now, what I did was take the tree and just laid it right on one of those sheet and those um, sheet pans actually come two to a pack. So you get two for a dollar. Um, I just laid my tree down, used it as a stencil, and traced around it. Now I'm going to take my box cutter, X-Acto knife, whatever you have. You could probably even do this with scissors. But I cut out my tree. I'm going to do the same exact thing for the other one. Um, but what I was saying about the foam board, I'm going to be using foam board a little later in this uh, video. So I didn't want to do it in both of these DIYs. Um, but if you didn't have the trees or couldn't find those, you could just simply draw a regular Christmas tree just like this right here onto some foam board, use that, and totally would work. All right, now, I'm going to be taking the elephant colored um, acrylic paint, and that is by uh, Apple Barrel elephant color and I'm just going to paint the front and back side of these trees. I want the back to have a clean finish and I want the front to have just enough on it that if I didn't cut them just right, you're not going to see it. You know what I mean? Now, in honor of Miss Holly from Hot Humble Pie, I will be using Burnt Umber and also the uh, Metallic Silver by Folk Art. That is actually how I learned to galvanize, was watching Holly over on her channel um, do her galvanizing, and she would use the burnt umber, and it just was so gorgeous. I mean, she does such a great, great tutorial, so I hope her I do her justice today, and um, I hope these turn out great. So, anyways, like I said, I just painted the front and back of these. The back of it is solid painted, and then the front side, I just painted around the edges because, obviously, we're going to be covering it with the metal, so... We'll get to that here here in just a minute. But the first thing that I did was, um, well, I hot glued these down. Let's do that first, obviously. <laughs> All right. Now, I just hot glued. The hot glue is probably not the best thing to use for this. I'm not totally sure just exactly what would be. Maybe, maybe E6000. That would probably work or even wood glue. But um, the hot glue was a little, uh, it, 
it's hot to the touch, obviously, but not too bad. But it just doesn't want to stay stuck. So probably something else would be a little better. But for this video purposes, I did use um, hot glue. Now, the first thing I did was take my elephant color that was left on my brush. Now, that is only what was left on my brush, okay, from uh, painting it the first time. And I just kind of went over the top of these. Just kind of scratched at it. Just, you know dry brushed it the best I could with what I had on my brush just to see if I could dull it down much and it did a little bit but I end up going back in here shortly and really really dulling it down now the first thing I did was mix the um and this is not exactly the way that Holly does it but that is where I learned to start galvanizing was from Holly so I've kind of got my own little way of doing it now but I did learn to galvanize from her, and the burnt umber is in it especially, I definitely learned that color from her because she would use it to distress, and it just, everything turned out so gorgeous. So, I was on a hunt in Walmart for burnt umber, okay? All right, now, like I said, I just mixed the gray and the silver together, and I'm going to completely cover this metal. Now, what I want to do is kind of dull it down. The way that I kind of like to do, to galvanize is to take the metal, whatever it is that you're painting, or if it's not metal and this is how you need to start out, you know, just with some shine to it. So you've got the silver in there, but you also add that elephant uh, gray. That way it dulls it down. It's not a new looking shine. It's more of a um, dirty looking shine, you know, an old looking shine. All right. Now I'm going to take that burnt umber and I'm just going right around the edges of these trees. And I do add in a little um, a little couple spots here and there, you know, on the actual tree just to give it that little bit of touch of, of um, you know, the, the rusting and the, the just the uniqueness of it, aging, distressing it. I love using the burnt umber. I think it is such a beautiful color and it really does look like rust, y'all. It seriously, seriously does look like rust. All right, so I'm just gonna go right around the edges of both of these trees. And like I said, I, I did add a couple spots as you see me doing there, just, just to give it that little touch of, you know, something else. But I just got darker and darker as I went and layered and layered, okay? So I would go around it with the burnt umber, then I would take my brush go back over the top of it with some of the silver and the gray. Then I would go back over it with the burn umber. So I just layered it until I got it exactly the way that I wanted it. All right, now I wanted to make it a little more farmhouse. So I decided to take a, a, a ruler and a Sharpie and just go ahead and add the black lines to this. Just that last little bit of detail, you know, for the galvanized uh, metal. Love the way that these turn out. They're so stinking cute. I did go over my, my marker lines with my dry brush and just, you know, kind of dulled those down, make sure they didn't look good and new, <laughs> fresh. All right, now we're going to take that little sign, and that is from the fall. I actually had that used from a, a, a previous DIY, but we're going to take that, flip it upside down, and put our trees down inside of it. So you still got the buffalo check around the outside. You know, you'll still be able to see that on our little our little rectangle sign there. But then we can put our trees down inside of it. And I just hot glued those in, y'all. Super simple. Just glued them right down in there. I almost messed up on that one. I just about got it too short or got my, my glue too high. Now, once I got them glued in, I decided I would add in some greenery. So I've got these picks. These are actually just some leftover eucalyptus. I've got some cotton that my daughter got for me. And then I've got some um, uh, pine cones that came from the Dollar Tree. So I just add these in. Super simple, y'all. Go ahead and add in my cotton and my, my little pine cones. Just kind of played with it, you know, until I got it like I wanted it to look. But this was so easy, and it really has a, I don't know, just a boutique look or something about it. I love this. I think it is so stinking pretty. Really turns out great. And there you have it.
that. Now, y'all don't forget this is a collaboration with Holly from over at Hot Humble Pie. Um, definitely check out her channel, y'all. She has got so many great DIYs and just such talent. Um, so many different videos. She has got out different playlists. I mean, her channel is just full of so much in inspiration. Her DIY Birchwood is one of the best that I've ever seen on, on YouTube. And that is hands down. So be sure and check out Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. There will be a link in the description box for her video. All right. Now, this next DIY, I have got a cake pan that I got from the Dollar Tree, obviously, because that was our... our um, item was the cake pan. And then I've got some beads that came out of a, like a five pack thing that I bought from Walmart, but you can also get beads at the Dollar Tree. And that little candlestick, I've used it a hundred times before, but it also came from the Dollar Tree. Now, first thing I did was just add my hot glue all the way around the edge of this candlestick. And then I'm just going to pop it right down. It, actually, I decided <laughs> I was going to pop it down in there and realize that I had left the paper still on there. So, you know, mini pearl, I, I tend to leave the, the tags on. <laughs> All right. So, never lay down a whole bag of beads. Just plop it down on the table because it's going to go everywhere, y'all. Okay. Now, I was picking up beads for days. Anyways, I did get a bowl, throw my beads over in it, and we are going to glue these beads with the hole facing to the side. You, you want to make sure that that hole is facing towards the side. That way, you know, you can't see it as you add your beads. But I'm just going to add these beads all the way around the edge of this uh, pan here. What we're doing is making just a little candle holder, like a riser. But I wanted it to look like one of the wooden ones that has the wood beads all the way around it. So, took it outside, gave it a Good coat of some Rust-Oleum uh, two times cover in the flat white. I tried to dry brush it with my mineral colored paint, and y'all, it just didn't do much. So, I went back in with the Waverly Wax, Antique Wax, and I just gave this a good, um, very good hand of dry brushing on, on top of it. I really wanted it to look like wood. I added in some eucalyptus, popped a candle down in the middle of this dude, added this little candle ring, Got it at the Dollar General store. And this is Darlin', I think. I love this. Our final DIY, DIY number four. So for this one, we're going to be using the foam board. That's our actual item that uh, Holly and I came up with. So um, for this one, I have got two of these over-the-door hanger things from the Dollar Tree and also this sled from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm taking the, the sled apart. I just need the, the pieces to it, actually. We're going to use that as kind of a guide um, for <clears throat> making another sled, but we're going to use this as a guide. Just just watch. You'll see. <laughs> All right. So I just laid these down on my foam board. I'm going to get a pencil, trace it out just exactly the same as it is. Super simple, y'all. All right. Cut it out with my box cutter. Both pieces, this part and that front part of the sled. And I actually cut it out um, twice. I wanted it to be really thick. You know what I mean? So it actually looks like a sled. And it really does when I'm done. <laughs> it turned out fantastic. All right. So I cut it out twice, remember? Now I'm going to take some um, sandpaper and just go along the edges. You can really smooth up some that foam board with, with some, you know, light, light sanded sandpaper or light... Um, how do you say that? Like, um, the grit on it is kind of light, so it doesn't really tear that foam board up real bad or anything. I don't really know how to say it, but I think y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So anyways, after I got the two pieces of foam board glued together, I'm going to take the actual sled, the first part that we had, and just glue that to the top. I thought, you know what? Why not? Just add it in there. Just That's just a one more piece to go to it, you know, just add, 
add to it. I, I in the beginning was going to just use it as a guide, you know, as my my template or whatever, but I thought heck with it, just throw it in there. So put that on there. Now, this is one of the infinity scarves from the Dollar Tree, and I just wrapped it around this this piece here that we have, the piece of our sled. I'm going to glue it down with hot glue. And this darn little hot glue gun, y'all, it was driving me nuts. I end up I end up here just in a minute getting out the big gun. <laughs> Cuz that little one was really being a pain in the butt to be able to get all of this glued. So, I just wrapped this like a present. I mean, literally that's the way that I ended up um putting this on there. I literally just wrapped it like a present. I would kind of pull it tight. I wanted it to be nice and nice and tight across there. This turns out so stinking cute. So I did the bottom exactly the same way as I did the top, y'all. I just wrapped it like a Christmas present. I did cut out um, an extra piece of fabric and go over the back and, and you know, cover up all of my hot glue that I had everywhere because I did have it everywhere. <laughs> I even made a little strip and went over that too. Just on so my front and back would be nicely done. All right, now I'm going to take those hangers and just bend them out straight. I want to keep the little loop at the end that actually looks like a ski, you know, that would be on the bottom of a sled, but the other end, I wanted it nice and flat, just straightened out. We're going to sit that right on top. It really looks like a sled, y'all. It's, it, oh my goodness. It As it was coming together, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is fabulous. Like, I absolutely love, love, love this thing. All right, now, Laid me out some um, of the tumbling tire blocks. I'm just going to hot glue those directly down to the little hangers, which is now our, our skis. The two at the top, I had, you know, kind of going diagonal because obviously that piece that goes across there is going to go across kind of diagonal. So that's why I put the, the two at the top like that. But I just hot glued them right to the middle. We're going to take our two pieces now and hot glue that to the, the logs, the, or tumbling tire blocks. I want to call them Lincoln logs for some reason. <laughs> I don't know where that just came from. Anyways, but I wanted it to kind of have that 3D effect where it was sitting up off of the um, sleds, the, the, the skis on the bottom. So... Anyways, once I was done, I did not like the way that you could see where that bend was, so I just wrapped that with twine. I added some greenery and a bell, all from the Dollar Tree. Now, I took some ribbon, and this came from uh, burlapfabric.com, matter of fact, but I've got ribbon from there. I have ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I have ribbon from Dollar General Store, just lots of different ribbon and twine. I've got some twine that came from burlapfabric.com, but I just cut it all up into strips. We're going to make a messy bow and just throw this dude right on top of here. And this is, oh my gosh, this exceeded my expectations by far. I mean, it just, it turned out so stinking good, y'all. I love it. So I just tied that messy bow up. We're going to hot glue it right down onto here. And that's all I did to this. And I absolutely love this.
right, y'all. That is it for today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you have come from Holly's channel. That would be awesome. I would love to have you. So definitely let me know if you've come over from her channel. And y'all let her know when you've come from my channel. That would be very cool too. So be sure you check out Holly's channel. It will be in the description box below. Uh, thank you so much for watching and y'all have a blessed day.